Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica and if you've been following along, I have been showing you beginning knitting tutorials to try and help you guys get started on your own projects. Now that we've covered the basics of casting on, knitting and purling, I thought it would be fun to tackle our very first project. Now I will have some more beginner videos coming soon, but for this one, really all you need to know how to do is to knit and I will show you a new way to cast on and bind off, which is really super easy for beginning knitters. Now for for this project we are going to need a few supplies here. I've got this nice buttercream alpaca yarn. This is a super bulky six yarn and if you look on the back it will tell me exactly what size knitting needles I need. This one says I need US 15 or 10 millimeter needles. I highly suggest a little bit of a bulkier yarn for this project, maybe a five or a six and larger needles. I think that is a lot better for a beginner. This other one would also be be great. This is a Lush Alpaca by Loops and Threads. I believe I got this at Michael's. This one is also a super bulky six and again it's asking for 10 meter millimeter or 15, US 15 knitting needles. So anything like this would be perfect for this project. You can of course use whatever you want. If you're a brand new knitter I would stay away from anything super um, artsy and you know uh, difficult to see your stitches. So pick a yarn that's going to be easy for you to work with. Then you'll want to get your coordinating needles, whatever is referred to on the back of your yarn. You'll also need some scissors. You'll also need a yarn needle. It just has a really big eye on it, which will make it a lot easier for weaving in our tails. If you don't have one of these, you can also use a crochet hook. So I think that's it for supplies. Let's go ahead and get started with this fun project. So to make this slip knot, it's very easy. We just have our tail of our yarn here, and we're just going to create a loop with that yarn and then push our tail through that loop but not let it come all the way out. It's very important that you push your tail through the loop and not your working yarn. Your working yarn is the yarn that's going over here to our ball. So let's do that one more time really fast. We're going to just make a loop like this and then stick that tail through the loop and then just pull on it like that. And you have just a short little tail over here. That is fine. Now we're gonna go ahead and slip that onto our needle. Now I have showed you in my long tail cast on video how to cast on that way. I'm going to show you an even easier way today. This is perfect for beginners. So we're just going to make our hand in kind of the shape of a gun and stick it underneath that thread like that. And then we're just going to simply turn our finger and slide that hoop onto our needle and then tighten it. Let's do that one more time. Here's my hand. I'm going to put it underneath the yarn here and then just twist my finger and stick that loop on to my needle. So this is called casting on and each one of these little guys is going to be a stitch in our project. So I'm going to again grab my yarn, twist my finger and add that onto my needle. And I'm gonna keep doing this until I have as many stitches as I want. Okay, so I've cast on 20 stitches here. Each little one of these is a stitch. And this is going to be the width of our scarf. So you can make it any width you like. You can make a thinner one, you could make it thicker. It's totally up to you. I'm gonna stick with 20 stitches on my needle here. And we're good as far as our casting on goes. Now to get started, we're actually going to take this needle and turn it the other way. When you're knitting, you always want the stitches that you have just knit in your left hand needle and then this needle with no stitches on it is kind of your working needle. We're going to hold that in our right hand. We're going to go ahead and start knitting and so to knit this first stitch we're going to stick our needle in from the front and out the back and then we're just going to take our working yarn here, wrap it around the needle counterclockwise and then pull it through that needle and then slip that loop off Okay, so we're gonna do that again. We're going to come in from the left side of this hoop here, out of the back, wrap our yarn around our needle, and I kinda of use this first finger to push it through and then pull that off. So essentially what we're doing is we're transferring the needles from our left, or the stitches from our left needle over on to our right needle. Okay, so let's do that again. Again, you're gonna come in on the left side of your stitch here 
out the back, wrap it around counterclockwise, pull that needle through, and pull it off. And I will do a close up for you. Okay, here it is a little bit closer. We're going to put our right hand needle in through the, on the left side of the loop here and out the back. Wrap around our yarn, pull it out, and then slip that off. And we're just gonna keep doing that all the way down this row. Now, if you're having problems with this knit stitch, I do have a how to do the knit stitch tutorial where I go a little bit slower and explain a little bit more, so that might help you out if this is a challenge for you. If it's not, let's go ahead and just keep on going until we don't have any more stitches on our left hand needle. And then one thing you probably just saw was my stitches were kind of twisting a little bit like this. You don't want that twisting, so just grab it and straighten it out every now and then. So here we are at our last one. This was our slip knot, if you recall. We're just going to finish that and pull it off. So we've effectively transferred all the stitches from our left hand needle onto our right hand needle. We're gonna do the same thing we did before and just turn our needle around. And we've got our first row of stitches. Now to tell how wide you'd like to make your scarf, you just want to kind of spread your stitches out onto your needle and that'll basically give you a pretty good idea of how wide your scarf is gonna be. And then if you like that, we can just keep on going. So here we are and we've got our naked needle, if you will, and we are going to just repeat this process again. Now to get a nice clean edge going up the side of my scarf, I am gonna show you a little trick. We're gonna slip this first stitch instead of knitting it. And to slip it, you're just going to put your needle in just like if you were going to knit it, but just pull it off. We're not gonna knit that stitch. Now we're going to go ahead and knit the rest of the way down the row and you'll want to repeat that slip stitch every time you turn your work and start again. So we're just going to keep on knitting here. Here we go, we've done our second row now and we're just gonna keep turning our needle when we're done. This is called turning your work in your pattern. If a pattern ever says to turn your work, that's all it means. You're just basically finishing on this side and then turning your work around and continuing on. And so again, we're just going to pretend like we're gonna knit this stitch, but instead we're just going to slip it off and then we're gonna go ahead and kind of tighten that before you keep going so that it's not super loose. And then we're gonna go ahead and keep knitting. Now one thing I wanted to show you, there's lots of different ways to kind of keep tension on this yarn over here. I like to just wrap it around my ring finger and then kind of over this finger. Um, if you're brand new, you can just hang on to it, wrap it around and just you know kind of grab it every time. That is fine. But as you get more comfortable with this, I suggest kind of tensioning it around your finger and then over this finger. It's a little bit easier to grab each time to make your stitch. But you just do whatever feels the most comfortable and easiest for you. As you're going, you will find out, figure out what you like and what works best for you. All right, and that is it guys. We are going to just keep on doing this process, slipping that first stitch and then knitting all the rest all the way down our row. And you're going to keep doing that until your scarf is the length that you want. Okay guys, so here we are. I have knit a few rows just so you can see this fun, squishy fabric that we are creating here. If you are brand, brand new, I definitely suggest rechecking your uh, stitch count every few rows. So just going back and counting your stitches to make sure that you still have the same amount that you cast on and you haven't dropped any or accidentally made any extras. Um, but otherwise you should be good to go at this point. I definitely suggest 
finding a comfy spot on your couch and maybe putting on a nice movie and just hanging out and relaxing with your knitting for the afternoon. You can just knit, knit, knit until your scarf is as long as you would like it. You can also um, do a cowl with this same technique. You would have to seam up your short ends uh, when you're done to make it into that loop, but this is a super easy and fun beginner project. I'm gonna go ahead and hang out and put on my favorite movie and do a little bit of knitting, and then I will meet you back here when my scarf is the length that I want it. Here we go guys, here is my finished scarf. I used my entire ball of yarn. Of course you can make your scarf as long as you want. This I think will be good for me, but if you want it longer, you may want to get two balls. I would say a ball and a half if you want to wrap it around um, and have it hanging down both sides of your neck, if that makes sense. So now we're going to talk about how to bind off our scarf. And so we've just finished this row. So all we're gonna do is slip this first stitch like we've been doing. And then we're going to knit the second stitch and you're always going to want two stitches on your right hand needle for binding off. So now we've got our two stitches here and we're going to simply grab this back. Whoa. Hello, Jaxie. So we're going to just stick our needle into this first stitch and pull it over the top of the second one. And you can kind of hang on to that. Might be easier to do with your finger. Hang on to that one. So now we have one stitch on again and we're going to knit the second stitch. And then we're going to grab that stitch and pull it over and drop it off. And we're just going to keep doing that, knitting one stitch and pulling the first stitch over the top of the one we just knit. We're going to do that all the way across this final row. So just make sure you leave yourself a tail. If you knit to the end of your ball, make sure you leave a long enough tail to just finish this process. Okay, we're coming to our last couple of stitches here. So we're just gonna do this last one. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and kind of pretend knit this stitch. But then we're just going to pull this last one through and just pull it tight and it makes this little knot for you. And there we have our nice bound off edge. And then all we have to do is weave these ends in. Weaving your ends in is super duper easy. We're gonna grab our large darning needle here. You can get these at pretty much any craft store. If you don't have one of these, you can also use a crochet hook um, as well. And then to hide this thread, really it's pretty simple. I'm just going to start sewing it in. So I like to go back and forth just to kind of lock that thread in place. And so I just kind of went down some of these. Then we'll go back up right here. And then back down. And I'm just kind of weaving it in. You won't, it'll pretty much hide your thread. You won't really be able to see it. And then if you want, you can kind of go in between some threads and go down to the second layer down here. And then we'll kind of do the same thing, just weaving in and out. And this process, you can kind of just wing it. But there you can see, you can really barely see that at all. I just kind of pull it out so that there's not any tension on my tail. And then we can just cut that tail off and we're done. And then we'll repeat that process on the other end of our scarf. Now I did quickly want to show you if you would like to add fringe to this project, it is super easy. So let me get the other end out of the way so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better here. And again, I'm just gonna use my dar um, darning needle, but you could always use um, a crochet hook for this part. And I'm going to thread my piece of yarn on here. And this is about an eight or so inch piece of yarn. You can make yours as long or short as you want. I like to make them longer than I want them and in that way I'll cut them off um, when I'm all done. But you're just gonna find one of these little end stitches here 
and just run it through, but not all the way, like that. And then you can just take these ends, pull them through there, and just pull tight. And then you've got little fringe pieces. And I would do one for each of these strips. You could do two pieces of yarn for each of these stitches along here. Whatever you want it to look like. And then when you're done, I just take a pair of scissors and or a rotary cutter and just trim off the edges so they all look nice and neat. But that's a super easy way to make this project just a little bit fancier. And here we go, you guys. We are all done with our super beginner-friendly knit scarf. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. That way I know to keep making these fun projects for you. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I will see you next time.